Yeah, that was great. Okay, just a few more, and then we'll have some lunch. Lunch? Mm -hmm. It's lunchtime? Oh, this is the most important day of my life, Bill, and I've got to hurry. Sam, Sam, where are you going? You know, I could have got killed in there. Well, for a private eye, we call that occupational hazard. Look, Mr. Feagan, I'm not a private eye. I'm a songwriter. Then why did you buy my business? I didn't buy your business. My lawyer did. Then you called me. You said you wanted to meet me, yeah, right? Yeah. Then you said meet you out in the street. Next thing you said, come up on the roof. You're removing some kind of listening bug. Then the guy you're bugging gets bugged. Next thing I know, I'm being shot at. <laughs> I thought maybe you wanted to learn something of what you bought into. I'm not interested. Okay, you're the boss. No, no, I'm not the boss. You see, my lawyer bought it. It was a tax shelter. That's it. Hey, you know, maybe I got something in your line. How about coming with me to meet a lady? A lady? I've already got to meet a lady. Hey, keep your eyes on the road, Buster, and make sure we get to City Hall in five minutes. Here, you make the other half if you make it to City Hall in five minutes. Go! Mrs. Samantha? Not yet, she isn't. Stay put, fella. The mayor's waiting to marry us. Who's he? Oh, business queen. Oh, by the way, um, that goes on the other end. That? Oh, this is for me? Oh, it's so beautiful! Oh, it's nothing, just a wonderful sports car. <gasps> Can we afford it? Well, my next song's a hit. Oh, what if it isn't? I'll take it back. No way, you get in. I'll drive. It's terrific. <laughs> I feel like Mario Andretti. Fortunately, you don't look like him. You know, you don't drive like he does either. Fair not. I intend to deliver you to the nuptial chamber, sound of mind and limb. that uh, commercial session this afternoon. Oh, come on, Sam. We talked all about that. You're going to keep up with your work. I'm going to keep up with mine, remember? Uh-huh. Providing it doesn't separate us. Of course. Where you go, I go. And vice versa. Yeah. We can help each other with our work. Mm -hmm. I'll stand by with a baseball bat while you pose for some lecherous photographer. <laughs> Do you mind? I'll carry you out later. Okay. But you may not be able to later. Oh. Do you feel different now that we're married? No. Come on. Yes, you do. Oh, yes, I do. Sure, I do. I do, too. I feel really different. <sighs> Sonny, do you mind if I change the drapes? You always liked them before. Yeah, we weren't married before. 
I don't care. Change the whole apartment for a like Hey, is this the new song you're working on? Mm -hmm. The future's bright, the past is fled. Yeah. That's really good. Thanks. What comes next? I don't know. I'm stuck. Oh. Anyway, I got something else on my mind. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. The future's bright, the past is fled. How about it's time to prove we're truly wed? Well, the lyrics will never win a Grammy, but I like your sentiments a lot. Hey, Sam, come on in here. Don't take too long. Oh, did you see all the wires? What? Did you see all the telegrams? Here's one from Elton. I can't hear you. The water's running. Elton says he wants us to have a proper honeymoon with him in Palm Springs. <laughs> Vinny Archero. Vinny Ar who is Vinny Archero? You don't know who he is? Mm -hmm. He wrote ten hit songs last year, and you don't even know who he is. No. But I know Sonny Hunt. Yes. And you're going to get to know him better. Mm. Mm. Wait, wait. Hey, where are you going? Patience, my dear. I will be back in one minute. Hurry up. Don't dally. Just another minute. Hey, if you're not out of there by the time I count to ten, I want an annulment on the grounds of, uh... What's the matter? I was only kidding. He didn't have a key. How'd he get in here? I don't know. I just met him for the first time this morning. I think Mr. Feagan was looking for help and he came to Sonny. Why? Because Sonny was his boss. No, honey. Uh, it, it was a business investment and I was kind of using it no, for... No, no. I don't care. You were his boss. Now, we were responsible for him. That poor man came here being beaten up very badly. Wait, came looking for help. And the murderer found him hiding in the shower and just Thanks. murdered him. Thanks, miss. That clears up everything. Except maybe you killed him. And if she does come up with that little detail, I'd appreciate a call from you, Miss Dodd. Right. You know what I think? No. I think the police don't have a very high opinion of private detectives. Mm. You know what I think? Mm -mm. I think you better get out of here or you're going to miss your commercial. Oh, I canceled it. You canceled it? Come on, Sam, we talked all about that. You were going to keep up with your work, I was going to keep up with mine. You remember? You know why I married you. Uh, yes, because if I shaved off my mustache, I'd be a dead ringer for Robert Redford. Because you're the kind of man who likes to get involved in things for Mr. Fegan. We have got to find out who it no, was No, 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 Sam. The police have to find out. No. Why don't you go to work, sweetheart, and get back here fast, and then maybe, maybe we can start our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be nice? I'll work on my song while you're gone, sweetheart. Hurry back. You just told your first lie since we've been married. What do you mean? You are trying to get rid of me. Oh, come on. That's silly. Oh. Now, what was it that you took from poor Mr. Fegan's pocket the police did not see and I did see? Oh. Oh. You mean that? It's a, uh, it's a ticket to, uh, to the country music concert at Riverside Theater. It's a clue. No. Jim Fegan didn't strike me as the kind of guy who'd go for 35 bucks worth of country corn, you know? So he must have been going for another reason. Right. I think. So what are we waiting for? Oh, no, not we. Oh, yes, yeah, sure we. We agreed to help each other in our work. Sweetheart, this is not our work. Yes, it is, and you were going off to do it alone. Come on, Sam, this isn't fun and games. I mean, I don't like somebody leaving a dead body lying around in the apartment. Well, neither do I. That's why we're going to the concert together. Oh, we can't. There's only one ticket. That's okay. We can buy another. Anyway, I just love country and western music. Everyone does. I don't. I don't understand it. Well, yes, I mean young people. 
Meaning what? I'm old? Uh, no, meaning, uh, <laughs> people who are mm, younger than you. I'm too old for you, right? No, I didn't say that. Well, what? What's the difference in our ages? Ten years? Oh, uh, who's counting? It's twelve. That's not even enough for a generation gap. I agree. I'm certainly not bad to look at. No, you're sensational. My face doesn't need lifting. No, it's perfect. Well, it is. Then what are we arguing about? We're not. You are. Now, if you don't get a move on, we'll miss the show. The old hometown looks the same as I step down from the train. And there to meet me was my mama and papa. And down the road I look, and there runs Mary, hair of gold lives like cherries. It's good to touch the green, green grass of home. Yes, they'll all come to meet me, arms reaching, smiling sweetly. It's good to touch the green, green Bless y'all, bless y'all. Thanks a whole heap. Now we got a real treat. The special lady in my life is going to sing a song that I wrote for her a few months back. A song that you good folks have been pushing right to the top of the charts. And a song that just might win her an award next week in Nashville. Now, let's show her how much we love her. My wife, Peggy Ann West. as the folks that work with me. Oh, thank you, Bill. Now that, that's something special. This old world might end tomorrow And you should make the best of it I'm asking for is a reasonable explanation. Stan, I don't know what you're talking about. Stan, Lena, hold it down. Big hands on. Where were you all afternoon? I was out looking for a job. Until I stop paying you, you've got a job. Oh, sure, Stan. And you stop paying me next week when Billy announces he's retiring. Now, maybe as his manager, you've been able to salt something away, but my press agent's salary doesn't make provisions for a rainy day. And it's only temporary. A little love is always necessary. Make your life extraordinary Oh yes, it's only temporary Only temporary The note says by stage after the show. Why are we leaving? Have you got the tape? What tape? See what I mean? Taxi! Okay, so what should we do now? Well, the way I figure it, Fegan was supposed to deliver the tape, so he probably had it with him when he was killed. That means that we know who the killer is. We do? Of course we do. The person who has the tape now. Great. I guess there isn't much help. No. Okay, where are we going? Fegan's office. If he's gonna be contacted, it'll be there. Get in.
lady. What do you want? Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Hey, you already have, lady. What do you want? Well, your building's on fire. It's what? Damn. Very good at this. Shh. Good at what? Detecting. I haven't done any yet. Well, you got us in here. That wasn't detecting. I used to do that all the time when I was a kid. Oh, poor darling. I didn't know you had a deprived childhood. Well, we didn't have any money, but I wasn't deprived. Now comes the tricky part. Getting in. You'll manage somehow. Dead only a couple of hours, and already the vultures are gathering. I, I beg your pardon. Well, I can't help you. If you want anything, you'll have to see Mr. Hunt. He's the new owner. Oh, uh, I am Mr. Hunt. And I am Mrs. Hunt. Mr. Hunt. Oh. <laughs> Poor Mr. Fegan. Oh. He had such high hopes when you bought this business. Everything's going to be different now, Mrs. Bloom. That's what he said. I've been his secretary for 25 years. The only job I ever had after I left my home in Alabama. Perhaps now he'll get some well-deserved rest. His feet used to bother him something awful, poor man. Oh, well, I must get going. It's way past my normal working hours. I'll see you in the morning at your desk. Oh, and uh, don't worry about Charlie. He's sound asleep. Charlie? Charlie! Oh, I Can't see. Good, neither will the night watchman if he comes back. A gun? Songwriters don't carry guns. Detectives do. Shh. What is it? There's two of them. You should have let me done this on my own. Boom, Billy. You can't afford to take no chances. My problem is my wife is in trouble. You just suspicion that. Now, you don't know that, so... Trigg, I'm gonna tell you something, because I know it won't go no further. Peggy Ann has withdrawn $20,000 from her savings account. She's hawked a bracelet that she told me she lost. Now, that afternoon, Stan said this fellow Fegan was in there doing rehearsals, and when he left, Peggy Ann was just crying like her heart was broke. Good. Blackmail. Well, if she ain't in some kind of a fix, What's she doing having any truck with a private detective? That's Bill West. You talked to Dana? About what? Well, all of a sudden, she's been running in and out of Peggy Ann's dressing room, driving her places, answering her calls. Stan was shouting at her tonight for taking off all day. Sugar? What are you saying? Peggy Ann's got trouble. Dana knows about it. Or maybe it's the cause of it. Dana's good people. I mean, she's just running scared like most of us. But she's got a lot of good in her, like most of us.
my jacket? Sonny, what do we do now? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way across this roof, and then I'm going to slide down to the fire escape. I've got a better idea. Honey, please, we'll do it my way. Now, just hold on. Hold on. Hold on, he says, as if I could do anything else but hold on. Now you do it my way? Okay, what's your way? You won't get angry with me? No, I won't get angry. What's your way? Do you promise? Honey, as long as it gets us down. Now, what's your way? Do you promise, cross your heart, help you Honey, please, just do it. Okay, okay. Too. Well, honey, this is a real exciting experience. I have never had such an exciting experience in my whole life. Listen, I've been thinking about our case. Samantha? Samantha? You never call me Samantha except when you're mad at me. I'm not mad, Sam, but it's not our case. It is our case. I have got a great idea. I don't want to hear about it. Oh, darling, do you remember we heard Billy Webb say that Peggy Ann was being blackmailed? Look, honey, I told you before, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, well, in the police station, when they allowed us to make a call... I made it. I called my lawyer. Oh. Uh, I am... I'm sorry, I tried to tell you. How did you, uh... How did she... You didn't. That's the call I made. I just told Peggy Ann that Mr. Pekin was dead and asked her if she still needed any help. And you were so down home friendly. Had the doorman let me in and, oh, I was so grateful. Oh, Lord, I'm cackling like an old hen. But it's so good to have someone to talk to. Did you try talking to your husband? Oh, you don't know, Billy. It would hurt him something awful if he knew I was being blackmailed. But Billy was... So Jim Fegan was the only one who knew? I met Mr. Fegan, oh, a long time ago in Tuscaloosa. So when we got to New York, I went to him for help. Well, what did he suggest? We made a tape of the blackmailer asking me for more money. Now, Mr. Fegan's idea was to warn the blackmailer that if I wasn't left alone, that we'd turn the tape over to the police. Well, what happened? Well, the blackmailer didn't believe there was a tape. Mr. Fegan was supposed to bring it to the concert tonight. You gotta go to the police. I can't. We'd like to help you, really, but this is something we know absolutely nothing about. Of course we do. We're detectives. No, we're not. Well, the point is we've got to help Peggy Ann. We owe it to her. How do you figure that? Because she was employing Mr. Fegan, and Mr. Fegan was employed by us. It is now our responsibility. Mrs. West, who's blackmailing you? I can't tell you that. Look, I don't even know you. The blackmailer could turn me in and put me in jail. Do you realize the man you're protecting probably killed Jim Fegan, and he's probably got the tape in his possession right now? Now, who's blackmailing you? Please, I can't tell you. Well, that's it, then. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go have a drink. Somebody want a drink? No. Oh, oh, please don't cry. I'm sorry. Oh, he's just being a, a man, you know. Just, it, it, he's just being practical. He'll help. You sure? Oh, I'm sure of it. I mean, tonight is my wedding night. <laughs> Where's Piggy Ann? She's gone out the back. Just like that? Mm-hmm. I hope you realize that you destroyed her. Oh, come on. I find that hard to believe. Well, I managed to undo most of the damage that you did. 
How'd you do that? By promising her we'd take the case. You did what? Well, what did you expect me to do? She was crying her heart out. No, look, Sam. There's something you and I got to get straight, and I guess our wedding night's as good a time as any. I mean, we certainly can't get to any of the normal things. Now, look, Sam. You're a model. You're the best. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to pose or who to pose for. That's your territory. You handle it. On the other hand, my territory is the work that I do best. And the work that I do best is not detecting. So I don't want to hear any more talk about taking over the running of Jim Fegan's office, even if we do own it, and no more getting involved in his leftover cases, which brings me to Peggy Ann. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's a closed book. I don't want to discuss it, and I don't want it mentioned again. You got it? I mean, do you really hear what I'm saying? That's it. Okay, where's she staying? At the Park Royal, but she's leaving for Nashville first thing tomorrow. All right, I'll call her before then and tell her I'll try to help her. In the meantime, it's 4.30 and it's time to think of other things. Darling, I love you. Well, that makes what I'm thinking about a very logical thing to do. What time did you say it was? 4.30. <gasps> I've got to hurry. Do that. Sonny, old buddy, how you doing? Yeah, I know what time it is. Yes, I know it's 4.30. No, I couldn't call you at the magazine in the morning. Look, Phil, I need a favor. Sonny? In here, sweetheart. If I didn't know you better, I'd say you were going out. I am. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I mean, you can't. I'm sorry, but the sun comes up over Staten Island at 5.30 a.m. Well, I'm sure it can manage on its own. It's done it many times before. No, no, you don't understand. Pietro wants to shoot a layout with a rising sun in the background. Can't he shoot the setting sun and print it backwards? <laughs> no. Oh. Honey, it'll only be for a few hours. I'll be back by noon at the latest, and we can have the whole afternoon together. There's only one problem. I'm going to be on a plane to Nashville. You the magazine reporter from New York, Mr. Hunt? Yeah. I'm Buzz. They sent me to pick you up. Come on, hop in. Let me have your bag. You're gonna love Music City. Listen to that baby purr. Ain't she a beauty? Real nice car. Nice? Man, it's the best limo in the whole state. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Who you reckon the big winners are gonna be? Big winners of what? The Music City Awards, cousin. That's what you come to Nashville for, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, who do you think will win? Well, the only one I really care about is the best female vocalist. I'm pushing for Peggy Ann West. It's, it's Billy's song, but man, how she sings. This baby's got a chromium-plated engine, custom tachometer, fuel injection, and about 14 coats of paint. Cost me nearly 20 grand time I finished dressing this baby out. Then I stripped down the whole engine and reboard the cylinders, you know, so I'd get a better compression ratio. She'll do about a hundred and a half if I already let her go. Great. Hey, uh, is the hotel nearby here or what? Oh, it's just off the road a piece, cousin. Then I did all this body work myself. I even put in this here partition. Watch it.
<laughs> How'd you like that trip, cousin? You're some kind of comedian, aren't you? Hey, you don't think I'm gonna let them squash the baby, do you? Well, maybe you did. That's just to show you how easy it is. Now, I got a friend who don't like private dick, so you get your butt on a plane and hustle back to New York. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Well, go. I'll let you know when I leave town. Hey, you're going to come here. You're going to leave. I'm going to stuff you in one of these tailpipes. Oh, yeah. You're insured, cousin. Billy West press agent. I was beginning to get a little worried about you. Yeah, I was too. Listen, I've already checked you in, so we can go straight to your room. Okay, where's the room? This way. I hope you'll enjoy your stay in Nashville. Mr. Hunt, look, I can't tell you how sorry I am about this. Billy's manager, Sam Prine, was supposed to arrange for a car for you. Oh, he did that. Oh, he did. He really did that. Well, then why? Why am I all sweaty like a racehorse and stepping on hot blisters? Well. And then why did I hitchhike and walk four miles to get here? The car broke down. <laughs> yes, in a manner of speaking. Look, I'll apologize. Uh, this is the kind of thing that press agents have nightmares about. What can I do to make it up to you? Just introduce me to your friend Sam Prine and then stand back. Mr. Hunt, look, do you think we could start over? I'm sorry. You're an innocent bystander. I'm really sorry. I just got a little hot, okay? Let me cool off and take a shower and then I'll be affable, lovable, sunny hunt. And I'll be affable, lovable, Dana Morgan. All right. Come on. You just wait and see. From now on, I'm going to see to it personally that you have tender, loving care. Okay. I'll go for that one. Now, you just take your shower, slip into something comfortable. Incidentally, your office wants you to call. I don't have an office. Is this the number they left? Bye. For now. Hello? Oh, Mr. Hunt! I'm so glad you called. I expected you in the office today. And what do you think that pretty wife of yours told me? She said you were in Nashville, of all places. Mrs. Bloom, what do you want? Well, seeing as how you and Mrs. Hunt decided to keep the business going, and after all, I do work for you. Who told you we decided to keep the business going? Uh, Mrs. Hunt. She said you took over one of Mr. Fegan's clients. 
I'm so glad. We're just one big family now, aren't we? Mrs. Bloom, did Mrs. Hunt leave a number where she could be reached? Most certainly did. Okay, there's something you can do for me. Call her at that number and ask her to call me here, will you? Oh, by the way, since you are working for me, did Mr. Feagan have any connections with the New York police? Oh, my goodness, yes. Okay, there's something else you can do for me. Find someone who's got access to old police records. Not for New York. Down south. I know my breath is kissing sweet since I started using vinyl toothpaste. Cut! It's upside down. <laughs> Sammy, your call's going through. Make it quick, honey. We don't want to be here all night. Okay, okay. Who's that for you? Hello? Honey? Hi, honey. How you doing? Okay, now. Yeah, me too. I miss you a lot. It's been 12 hours. Well, I had a memorable welcome to Nashville. Somebody doesn't buy my reporter cover. Who? I don't know, but I'm not wanted here, that's for sure. Oh, poor darling. Well, don't worry. I'll be able to help you tomorrow. What do you mean? Well, I've um, canceled my schedule for the rest of the week, and I'll be in Nashville tomorrow. Uh, honey, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? Well, because, uh... Well, I'm really heavily involved here. You know, that air conditioning could give you pneumonia. Is someone with you, Sonny? Uh, no, no. Sounds like it. Oh, well, oh, well yeah, uh, room service. Oh, okay. All right. Well, listen, honey, if you don't think that I should come, I won't. You love me? I sure do. Say it. Um, you know I do. Bye. Miss Morgan, what are you doing here? Just a little taste of hospitality. Here, why don't you try this? It's uh, Southern style. No, no, thank you. I'm a Yankee. I, I never drink till the sun's over the yard on me. <laughs> to each his own. Anything else I can do for you? Well, this is my first country music assignment, and it's the first time I've been to Nashville. You're reporting for Sound Scene, and this is the first time you've ever been in the music capital of the Western world? Yeah, well, see, um, there's this gap in my education, and you can help me close it by introducing me to everyone around Billy West, like, oh, Stan Prine, Tigger Wade, uh, Peggy Ann. Okay, we start tonight. No, 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 not tonight. Tonight, I'm real tired. Tonight, I'm going to sleep. I'll be back to pick you up in two hours. And if you're not ready, I'll come in after you. We're going to Prince Alley. We're going to right on the highway. Showtime is 15 minutes. That's showing the alley, folks. Guarantee you've been well satisfied. Boots Randolph and Nelson. That's showing the alley. When temptation comes around, I always let you down. Doing what comes natural to a fool. I promised you before, and I promise you once more that I'm gonna change and make things up to you. But I But I didn't know Stan would be around. Oh, they're always going at it. Stan's been on Chigger's case ever since he joined the tour last month. He hates his guts. And the feeling's mutual. I guess Nashville's a village when you're in the music business. That's right. Everyone knows everyone else. They all go to the same places and do the same things. It's downright incestuous. You find it in your heart. Don't you forgive me? I try to do the things I promised to. I'm trying to be true, but I know I'm losing you. Doing what comes natural to a fool. I, I promised you. 
I told you to pick up that report at the airport. In the first place, I ain't no chauffeur. I'm a guitar player. Well, that's open for argument. To me, you're just another one of Billy's charity cases. Well, what would you like me to do? Swear in my mother's grave? I went to pick him up. I waited an hour. He never showed. You're a liar. Well, I got a notion you're a liar. You knew he wasn't gonna be there. You just wanted to see if you could make me take orders. Well, you just stay off my case, lady. I want you to meet Sonny Hunt. I do, Sonny. How you doing? Call me Jigger. Hi, pretty. something for me. Me? No, the only thing I compose is uh, magazine articles. Hey, you know, that's, that's, that's funny because there is, an, is another song, uh, a, song a, a composer. You got the same man that, that you've got. And he's, 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 boy, he's great. No kidding. Well, if I ever see him, I'll tell him you said that. Hey, I appreciate that because, you know, it ain't easy for me to say anything. Hey, good buddy. Remember, if you need lead guitar, I'm gonna be free. Hey, I'll remember that. Okay, thank I you. I really will. Goodbye, Mr. Hunt. Nice meeting you. Chigger, Dana. Bye. I'll see y'all. Bye. Now that is a class act. Remind you that even with Billy quitting the business, there'll still be quality folks around. Now, if that endorsement had come from me, you'd put it down to publicity, son. But Chigger's right. Billy West is one terrific guy. The kind of thing he done for me? He done for plenty of others, and ain't another man like him. You like my new jacket? Yeah, where'd you get that? Chigger, what did he do for you? I did time once. Actually, I did time more than once. <laughs> Seems like every time I left Tuscaloosa, I found myself in trouble with one kind or another. And Billy turned me around. How'd he do that? Well, he did a gig at the prison and uh, you know, heard me play and told me as soon as I get out to come see him. Well, you know, you hear that kind of thing all the time, but Billy meant it. He gave me my shot at staying straight. Billy West is the one man in this business I've never heard anyone say anything bad about. Now, Stan Prine, is, uh, is he a fan of Billy's, too? He ought to be. Billy's carried him for years, put up with his bad temper, gambling, jealousy. Jealousy? Yeah. You jealous of anybody that comes around, Billy, even Peggy Ann. Oh, come on, Chigger. Now, be fair. Jealous isn't the right word. Uh, devoted is more like Thank it. Thank you. Stan just puts now Billy first before anything else. I don't know what he's going to do now that Billy's retiring. Well, I know what he's going to do. He's going to starve. <laughs> Look at him. Nobody else would want that hard-nosed creep around. Excuse me a minute, I gotta make a phone call. Mm -hmm.
I saw you slip some money to Stan Prine last night. What was that all about? I owed it to him. Stan needed it in a hurry. He had a bookie after him. <laughs> Is that the truth? I'm scared. I don't know what to do anymore. Well, why don't you trust somebody? Trust me. Hope you finish your interview, Sonny. Because I have come to claim my lady. I didn't get around to telling you this morning, but you can write it down right now. Billy West hunted a long time before he found this woman. Billy. Well, it's true. You are the last of the pure, innocent, sweet-faced angels smelling. Soap and flower. See how it is, Sonny? Hard to live up to that image. Welcome to go fishing with us, if you like. No, thanks, Billy. I got work to do. See you at Peggy Ann's birthday party. Bye. Bye. Terribly. I miss you too. What are you doing? Um, working, working. Oh, hard? Yeah, it's a, it's a salt mine down here. Aren't you going to answer that door? What door? The one I'm knocking on. Out. Uh, you're here? Uh, well, when, when did you get in? Well, if you open the door, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, I'm coming, honey. I'm just drying off. I'm coming out of the shower. Be right there. Okay, honey. Okay, you gotta get out of here. I'll explain everything later. You'll be my friend for life. Just go. came all the way down here to deliver a message? No. Every future writer should have a staff photographer. And you have just kissed the accredited staff photographer for Sound Scene Magazine. Currently on assignment with Sunny Hunt, a star writer. When do we start work? Oh, we don't. Anyway, you don't. Why not? Well, honey, because one hour from now I have to go to a party and you can't come with me. What kind of a party? Well, it's Peggy Ann's birthday party, and it's very important that I go with... Well, honey, it's very important that I go with the person I'm going with. Mm-hmm. Uh, -huh. uh what's she like? Come on, it's business. She's a press mm -hmm. agent. Ugly. Hideous. Hideous. Mm -hmm. But now the goodness. We still have an hour. Not so fast, lover. Since when do you go around seducing your photographers? Come on, honey, you're not a photographer. As long as you're not my husband, I'm a photographer. And photographers don't share rooms with their employers. The future arrives every minute.
How are you, Sonny? Ray nice to meet Steven. you. Hi, Sonny. Hello. How are you? Sonny's with Sound Scene. Sound Scene? Yeah. I got a gripe to pick with your magazine. They said that I had crossed over to Pop and wasn't country anymore, and I got 300 angry letters from used-to-be fans chewing me out. Well, I'll see that we run a full-page retraction in red ink. What he'd rather have is a plug for his new record. With Billy retiring, maybe some of the rest of us will be able to get back up in the charts again. Maybe. Hey, you've never been off the charts, Ronnie. You're the best. Molasses and cornbread. What am I? Stew tomatoes and okra? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all excuse me? Sure. Well, I tell you, Billy, if Peggy Ann wins tomorrow night, and I'm betting she will, it'll be the first time an angel has ever stood on the opera stage. Hey, you guys remember this? Once in every life. Where's Chigger? Uh, he should be here by Doc. He went back to pick up a photographer who said that you were expecting him. You know, you would have saved me a lot of trouble if you would have told me up front that Chigger was blackmailing you. How did you find that out? It wasn't too hard. You told me you knew Jim Fegan from Tuscaloosa. Chigger's police record shows he was in Tuscaloosa at the same time. Look, that doesn't mean that... Chigger was sent up for a crime aided and abetted by an unidentified female accomplice. You? Oh, it was so awful. I know all about it. You and Chigger had this scam worked out where you'd con your way into a man's hotel room. Then Chigger would bust in as the outraged husband. And then when the Mark came up with enough money for you to move on and start a new life, to take off. Ugly, and it makes you sick, don't it? Imagine what it'd do to Billy. Piggy Ann, it was a long time ago. You gotta forget it. Chicken won't let me forget it. Look, if we nail him for Fegan's murder, the only people he's gonna talk to is the New York police. And then anything he says is only gonna put nails in his car. But how can you do that? Here's what I need you to do. Get Chigger alone. Tell him there's going to be no more payoffs because you got it. But if he did kill Fagan, then he's got it. Exactly. You make him prove he's got the tape, and we got him. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Say, thanks for getting him to Nashville. I didn't know you two worked together. Yeah, neither did I. OK, Peggy Ann, go to it. If you need help, yell. You don't know how good it makes me feel to know that you're both helping me. Thanks. Bye. What are you doing here? Oh, we're taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I just took one of that ugly, hideous old press agent that you brought to the party. Oh, wait a minute. This whole detective business was your idea, you remember? Now, you got to take the rough with the smooth. Yeah, well, she is the rough, and I am the smooth you'll get later if you behave yourself. Incidentally, I have figured out who the blackmailer is. You did? Mm-hmm. Who is it? Chigger Wade. 
How'd you figure that out? Well, it was easy. One, he's uh, got real shifty eyes, and you can never trust a man with real shifty eyes. Uh, number two, he's got something real heavy on his mind. And number three, there's a strange wait, sort wait, of... Wait. What? How do you know he's got something heavy on his mind? Oh, well, because he didn't make a pass at me coming over in the car. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number three, he's... There's... It's just something I feel. It's uh, feminine intuition. And number four... I forgot what four it was. Honey, that's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I mean, you are brilliant. I would have never known it was Chick or Wade in a million years. Well, I told you I'd be a help, didn't I? Didn't I tell you, you I'd did. be a help? You did. <laughs> and you are. Mm. And you know what? There's only one thing saving you from an on-the-spot ravishment. What? I gotta go to work. So do I. Big long Cadillac and everything. Here's my big fine fancy townhouse style is. And a hotel suite in New Orleans. Call up Judy on the telephone. And there's a little bit of 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 a No, I got a better idea. Let's call it the Tennessee Two Plus Sam. Hey, Stan, you think you could handle us as a trio? Nope. I'm not available. I heard him chewing out Chigger while ago, a big shouting match, and now I guess I'm on his list. It makes two of us. Well, son, in this situation, I reckon all we can do is sing a hit. She's a broken lady. Peggy Ann or Chigger? No, but I saw something that will surprise you. Okay, Miss Pinkerton, what'd you come up with now? Well, you know your friend Dana, darling Dana. Mm -hmm. I think she's got something going with Chigger Wait. By what secret process of deduction did you come up with that? Well, he had her buy his gift for Peggy Ann. Some candy, mm -hmm. and she gift wrapped it. Now, a woman that does that kind of an intimate Sam, thing for a man. Sam. I had oh, Dana God. buy my present for Peggy Ann, too. You did? Yeah. I mean, do you think that means anything? I don't know what that means, but if I come up with an answer that I don't like, you are in trouble. Then the walls came tumbling to the ground, and her world came crashing down around her heart, her heart. Now she you want to know something, darling? And this is gospel truth. Sometimes I get to wishing the old days was back. Remember? Just you and me against the whole world. And oh man, we had some good times. You were terrific back then. Best con woman ever. And you went on to prove it too, didn't you? Con Billy into marrying you. I love Billy. Sure you do, honey. Sure you do, and he loves you. Because he doesn't know who you are or what you are. And the only reason he doesn't know is because I kept my mouth shut here and in court. Now, I want 20000 by tomorrow. It's not going to be any more, Chicken. See, I got the tape now. And if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to take it to the police. You 
a liar. I got the tape. That's all I wanted to know. You got it from Jim Fagan. You killed him. Who told you that lie? Your reporter friend again? Well, he ain't gonna be no help to you if I sit down with Billy before the award show and tell him the facts of life. Now, I want 20,000 by noon tomorrow. I've been waiting for you. How about a nightcap? Uh, you've got uh, five minutes to get rid of Miss Barracuda. Or, uh... Hiya! Hi. Five minutes or I'm on the plane. No, no, it's business. Mm -hmm. It's business. Mm -hmm. You know me better All than right. that. Have a little faith. Why have you been stalking me since five minutes after we met? Well, I lose my job next week when Billy retires, and I just thought maybe with your connections at Sound City, oh, you might... Oh, Dana, you just crushed my ego. I thought you were crazy about me. Well... All right, I'll see what I can do, okay? Let's you take me home. I gotta go. It's getting late. Why? You think you got something better waiting upstairs? Come on, Dana, I gotta go. All right. Just take care you don't run into Chigger coming out of your sexy little photographer's room. What do you mean? Chigger. I mean, I saw him sneaking in there a little while back. <laughs> We ought to have a little talk. I should hope we can have a little talk. First off, that awful man murdered Mr. Fegan in our apartment. And then he stole the tapes. And then he went to poor Peggy Ann again. again. And then he tried to murder my husband in an auto shredder. Then tries to blow us both up. I should certainly hope we can have a little talk. Okay. She's overreacting, little lieutenant. I am not overreacting. I am just not used to it. I am not used to it, and I don't like it. Any idea who might have done this, Mr. Hart? Of course he has an idea. He knows who did it. Tell him who did it, honey. I was about to, Good. honey. Yes. His name is Chigger Wade. Now, we suspect he murdered somebody in New York City a couple days ago. He was certainly blackmailing somebody. You suspect he murdered a man? He murdered poor Mr. Fegan in our bathroom, and now he tried to kill us. Just take it easy and let me talk to the lieutenant, okay? 
His name was Chigger Wade. No, guess... no, no, honey, you are just being too matter-of-fact about this whole thing. It was Chigger Wade, Lieutenant. There's absolutely no doubt about it. It was Chigger Wade. Do me a very big favor, Mrs. Hunt. Oh, let your husband. Mr. Hunt, telephone. Urgent. I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Okay, Lieutenant. Now, what was it you wanted to know? Hunt. Help me. Again? Again, where are you? Oh. Again, tell me again slowly. Poison. Oh, it hurts. Again. Please, help me. Unit 62. I want to pick up on Chigger Wade. He's 61 or 62, and he's got real shifty eyes. Check with Billy West people. Hey, They'll have his address. Bring him in from Toyota. That was Peggy Ann. She's been poisoned. Where is she? Last time I saw her, she was at the house. Let's go. Come on. back, honey. Okay. She dropped the phone. I couldn't get her back on the line. Well, if she's at home, why did she call you? What is it? What's the matter? Can I call them, Mr. West? The wife's nowhere in the house. I've been looking for her. What, what's happened? We don't know, but we have to act quickly. She's been poisoned. Poisoned? Yeah. Have any idea where she might be? She might be up at the cabin. What cabin? We got a cabin about 20 miles up in the hills. What's the number? Uh, 555-6860. Five, 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 six, six, oh. Or she might be out at the farm. Anyone out there? No, we just use day workers. What's the number? Got another phone? There's a phone in the kitchen, and it's in the book by the phone. Did you talk to her? Yeah. What'd she sound like? Billy, does she often drive off alone like this at night? Sometimes. She likes to drive at night. She calls it her getting it together time. No answer from the farm. Same with the cabin. Sorry. Look, guys, she's been poisoned. She may not be able to answer. We got to get to those places fast. I'll take the phone. I'll go with you. Mr. West, you got a phone in your car? Yeah. Keep in touch. We'll take the cab. Let's go. You know, it's been 34 minutes since I talked to her last. That's fast-acting poison. I'll tell you. If anything happens to her, Sam, I just don't know what I'll do. Billy, it'll be all right. It will. I, I'm sure it'll be all right. I'm sure it will. I'd hate to drive up here if I were in a real hurry. This is Culver. I need an ambulance. Contact Billy. Tell him we found her. She's ingested, I don't know. Let's move. Well, I'm going with you. Sonny. This is from the gift I told you about. What gift? The one that your Dana got for Chigger to give to Peggy Ann. I did not buy that candy. You know we can check that out. So check it. Look, Chigger brought it in the office this morning, asked me to gift wrap it and get it back to him in time for Peggy Ann's party. But the candy was in your possession all day, right? Right, so what does that prove? Look, it was Chigger's gift. Now, he picked it out, he paid for it, he gave it to her. Some happy birthday. Hello. Yes, just a moment. Lieutenant. Culver. Right. On Chigger Wade. Where is he? Inside. Lieutenant. Hey. Oh. 
Hi, Lou. Well? Shot three times at close range, about two hours ago. That show. Miss the awards? Miss 30 million people watching? There's no way I'm not going to be there as long as there's a chance I'll win. Now go on. Oh, Sonny, make him go. Billy, she'll be fine, really. Honey, why don't you stay with me? Well, of course I will. It'll be all right. Dr. Leonard Kemp, do you need an emergency? Okay, then. You take care now. I will. You sure? Let's go, Sonny. Dr. Schwartz. Come here, man. Dr. Stephen Schwartz, please report to surgery. Uh -huh. You take her to the opera yourself. Whoever tried to kill her might try again. I think you're beginning to enjoy all this. What do you mean? You're starting to sound like Humphrey Bogart. You're getting silly. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. That sugar sure had me fooled. I had him down for a mighty good fellow. It's not hard to fool you, Billy. I mean, you expect the best from everybody. Maybe. But you know, Sonny, if you expect the best out of everybody, you ain't gonna be disappointed as often as you think. You, uh, you know what sugar was blackmailing Peggy Ann over? Yeah. So do I. Well, why didn't you tell her before? Same reason I'm not telling her now. I figure if she wants me to know, she'd tell me herself. See, I trust Peggy. Whatever went down before we met, that was a whole other lifetime. There's something else, Billy, you know that? Sure you want to do this? Yes. Well, I'm worried about you well, driving all alone. Well, fine, really. This is Wes. Never expected to see you on your feet this fast. Sure you okay? Well, not quite all there just yet, but I'm getting it together <laughs> fast. <laughs> Listen, hon, would you mind calling Billy for me? Tell him that I'm on my way. I'm okay. I'm going to drive the car back to our place and get changed there. Okay, I'll call him for you. Are you uh, going to be all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, I'll meet you back at the house. All right. Take care. My people will just be a couple of more minutes. What are they doing? Making sure we've got everything from that box of candies. She ate some in the car, more in the cabin. Where was she when you and Sonny found her? You detecting again, Mrs. Hunt? I'm detecting just a wee bit of male chauvinism. That's what I'm detecting. No offense, ma'am. Thought you'd found something that had escaped us. No, nothing I found. Just something I feel. OK, Mrs. Hunt. We found her over here. I guess she staggered that far after she dropped the phone. You feel something important. Please let me know. Everything okay, Mrs. West? I can't find my car keys. But I will find them. I think I saw them on the coffee table downstairs. Oh, good luck tonight. They tell me you're the dark horse for female vocalist of the year. Well, thank you, Mr. Culver. Not much chance of that, but I'm proud just to be nominated. Hope you win. Thanks. Thank 
just a minute. Is there a Sunny Hunt around? Uh, yeah. Sunny Hunt? Yeah. Thanks. Hello. Hi, hon. Where are you? I met the cabin with Peggy Ann. She wanted to get her car. Listen, honey. Last night when you got here, did you notice where the phone was? No, I went to work on Peggy Ann. Uh, Culver made the call for help, but I'll ask him, huh? No, no, no. I already did. It was off the hook. Sam, you know what that means? Uh-huh. I know who killed Chigger. Oh, honey, you shouldn't have done that. Sam? Sam? Sam! Sam! Miss, come here a minute, will you? Yeah, is there something wrong? Can uh, I help you? Uh, yeah, um, uh, what's your name? Barbara Mandrell. Okay, uh, look, this is for your help, Barbara. But wait, no, it's okay, understand. it's okay. Um, do me a favor. Call the police department. Ask for Lieutenant Culver. Tell him to meet me in front of headquarters. Tell him I know who killed Chigger Way. How did you know? Well, think. When we got to the cabin last night, the phone was off the hook. Yet when we called from Billy's place an hour earlier, the phone rang. Not a busy signal, no answer. Peggy Ann must have called you from the recording studio. Right after she shot Sugar. And set up a near perfect alibi. Then she drove up to the cabin, took the phone off the hook, swallowed enough sedative to make it look good, and waited for us to get there. I couldn't let Jigger go on trial. He would have sent me to prison and ended the one decent, loving thing that ever happened to me. I don't want to do this. No. I don't want to, but you'll tell. No. No matter what I do, the gun will tell. Sonny knows that I'm up here with you, and if he finds me killed by the same gun, he'll know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I can't hurt you. I'll take you home. We'll talk to Sonny and Billy. No. No. You go on. Send the police for me. I want some time alone. No. Don't worry, I'm not going to do what you think. Here. That's all the evidence they'll need. Peggy Ann. Shh, shh. I'm sorry. I'm going to walk down to the foot of the mountain. Billy knows the place. It's where he asked me to marry him. Anywhere up ahead we can pass? No. Look, pull up. Pull up, pull up. Look, I can climb up to that cabin in three minutes. It's gonna take you 15 to drive it. Stop here.
And now it's my honor to announce the winner for the Outstanding Female Vocalist of the Year. And the winner is Piggy Ann West. Oh, my poor angel. Billy, do you want me to go on for her? It's awful sweet of you, Barbara, but... It's something I think I ought to do. Out there is the only family I got left now. Again, can't be here tonight to feel your love reaching out to her but I feel it. So with your kind permission, I would like to accept the award for her, and I would like to sing you her song. You've got to live each day like your last. It's too late to worry about the past. No time for regrets, no reason for sorrow. This old world might end tomorrow. And you should make the best of it. Your life's at your command. And you should treat it like a bird in the hand. And now is the moment that you can begin it. The future arrives every minute. And it's only temporary. A little love is always necessary. to make your life extraordinary. Oh, yes, it's only temporary. Only temporary.
listening to a tape of country star Billy West singing at last night's Music City Awards in Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, happy anniversary. We've been married five whole days. <laughs> five whole days of murder, madness, and mayhem. Oh, what a glorious honeymoon. Well, I'm going to make it up to you as soon as we get home. Mm -mm, that's not soon enough. Welcome back to New York. I hope the room that Mrs. Hunt had me booked for you is okay. Now listen to this. It's very important. I think you should come down to the office right away. Well, this man came in, and he thinks somebody's trying to kill him. Now, I made an appointment for you to see him. This afternoon. Hello? Hello, Mr. Hunt. The future's bright, the past is fled. Turn out the light. So to bed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 